Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of Warp Ultimate Apocalypse casts this side of East Yorkshire. And today we've got a free versus free on gear. Playing on the top right hand side as the Dark Eldar, we've got Topper. We've got Reaper God 36 playing as the Timonids, and we've got Get Clapped playing as the Tau Empire. And on the bottom left hand side, we've got the Good King playing as the Imperial Guard. We've got Eshan playing as the Necrons, and we've got Z Lu playing as the Chaos Space Marines. And before we get to the game, I do have to apologise in advance as I'm quite hungover, and so my brain is probably going to be a little bit slower than normal. Spent quite a long time last night just having a bit of a music binge. I went for the entire discography of My Chemical Romance while getting quite hammered. Why My Chemical Romance? Because of the best band in the world. Fight me in the chat, I don't care. Back in the day when I was a kid, they were the, the boys to listen to. But anyway, enough of me being an old man reminiscing about the past. We've got the Dark Eldar doing some mischief straight up, on the, uh, straight up off the bat. Got Mandrix just absolutely charging in with full speed ahead. And a portal been popped down by a tortured slave. So people will be able to teleport in, I assume. Are you going to build a portal down yet? No. Nope. So I assume this is for, what can, we, what can we say, building, range, for something else, I imagine. Unless, of course, the plan to... Unless, of course, he's forgotten to build a portal in this base, maybe. Oh, no, he's going to build a Tower of Loving inside the base. So quite early aggression from the Dark Eldar. That's what we'd like to see. One Mandrake, two Mandrake, three Mandrakes actually been sliced down by some cultists and Chaos Space Marines. Now they're definitely going to take this down ASAP. They don't really have much in the way of anti-building weaponry at this stage of the game. Torch Slave running away as best he can. As the Mandrakes get cut down. Yeah, those, those cultists, man, they're actually not too bad in close combat against those Mandrakes. Can they actually do it? Yeah, they're not, not doing barely any damage against these structures, so they're gonna probably be on the foul end of a couple of dark blasts. What's going on on the rest of the map? We've got the Tyranids with Termagants moving down the centre with a Vectori Broodlord. We also have some horses have all been slain by some Breachers and a Commander. We've got a Stealth Suit as well, cheekily going around seeing what he can cap and decap. Conscripts attempting to capture the Relic, but I imagine that the Stealth Suit will probably go in there. Can he decap it before anything's built on that? Yeah, he can. Well done. Good stuff. Oh, yeah, a third one's been popped down. But thankfully, we've got some attack scabs coming over. Attack scabs can slice down a building relatively quickly, considering their size. But they're not doing all that well. They've been shot down. Sad time for them. Although they have been forcing themselves much faster than they are being killed. So that is something. More Mandrakes. I go and see what they could do. Going to try and cap some stuff. Chaos Lord will come over as well to see if we can strike down these infernal Tower of Lovings, which preventing the Chaos player from really expanding onto the northern side, allowing the Dark Eldar to do their business. But they are a little bit behind in upgrading all their stuff, including getting into the Tier 1 slash 2. Demigods now showing the Pale Guardsman the business. One Guardsman being slapped down by the Victoria Broodlord as he kind of bumps and jives down towards them, shuffling his little feetsies. Got some lads inside the listing post as it's being upgraded. Lovely little placement for the pl for the plasma generators. Although you would normally see them in a line around the field command so, um, so it can tech up a lot quicker. That's okay. We don't judge. Aesthetically pleasing base layouts is always high on my priority list. Oh, interestingly placed turret inside the heavy cover. Dark commander will. Attempt to shoot down at it, and he actually does a fair bit of damage against the turret placement. So Broodlord slowly but surely chunking his way through the, uh, what's it called, the listening post. Can he crack it open before he himself is smashed down? Go on, you can do it. There we go. Good lad. And now you're probably going to have to run back home to the safety of the hive mind turret placement. Opening fire on those Termagots. They've been eating as well, so they're doing all right for the health 141 extra health per model. But Troy Brillard has been brave. Not sure if this is advisable though. Yeah, he's been shot down. No, he wasn't. Thought it was a kill animation. There we go, that's the kill animation. There we go. So he is brown bread. Timmy is now also having a little bit of a debuff. Well, these ones that can see him having a little bit of a debuff when they see their Victoria Brillard being slain. Necron Warrior is going to push on in. Chaos Space Marines, the fort right here. Well, if we can't push forward from this area, we may as well go around the side. Which I do quite like, actually. My lord, my lord, if you can't go over it, if you can't go under it, you've got to go around it. That's 
That's how the the, the, the poet poet is that a poem? Child children's story? Something like that. Either way, those plasma generators are fair game for the forces of chaos. Aliens will jump straight on in and see if they can tie them both up. We can only tie one squad at the moment. But well, Mandrake Squad is going to come over and see what they can do. Chaos Space means uh, nothing to be sniffed at in close combat or in ranged combat. We've got a lot of health, a lot of damage as well. Second squad of Hellions and also a second squad of Mandrakes. So slow but surely being outnumbered. Also got some Termagants coming over for firing support. So Chaos Space Marines, now they're in a little bit uh, shish kebab here. They've got nowhere really to... Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, the the Hormagants on the Brian side as well. Yeah, this is a, a bad job for them. They've got to get out there ASAP. Zila asking for help and yep, help is probably what you would require in this situation. Not a happy time for him at all. But the Towers of Loving continue to expand. This is a very unfortunate situation for the Chaos Space we player. We'll probably need some of his allies to come down and help. I mean, we're having the exact same thing going on by Good King down here. Slow expansion of turrets. As well as the Thermal Plasma Generator. Conscript's been slain by the Breachers. Tower Commander also doing some stuff. The Chaos Space Marines now have having ran through the uh, Tyranid base. Still alive there. Two squads with relatively healthy health, which is a term that I've just made up, uh, considering that they've just been chased around by everyone. So well done, boys. Some spine guards capturing the relics on the northern side. And one singular Hellion left. No more friends for that man. Necro Warriors finally coming over to Help the Chaos player, tier 1 slash 2, on the way for Chaos Space Marines. Let's got some flayed ones. And slowly but surely, these Towers of Loving will begin to go down. And now it's just these guys versus a whole load of Tyranids. And individual units will be winning this for the Space Bugs, but as is standard, you never see one squad on its own. It's always a mess of units. Necron Warriors now teleporting back up, leaving the Chaos Player to his own devices, and oh dear. Triple Towers of Loving have been placed on this side. I'm going to have to see. Oh, we've got uh, a Ghost of it. Firing things away. I think there was also a mine placed on there. I think that was a big explosion. In the corner of my eye, at the very least, Necrons, in theory, should be a lot more motivated to defend this map, considering that it's a very Necron esque map. Lur hanging in there. He's only got one more listening post left. His allies are coming. Imperial Guardsmen Riders sallying forth in a most defensive of manners. Giving these Omegons a good stabbing as the Necron Warriors come forward alongside the Chaos Space Marines. This will give the uh, Tau a time to push on on the right hand side if they have the mind for it. Wow, Plasma Turret attempting to be built up by the uh, Ripper Swarms here. There's a game of turrets. Turrets everywhere. But the Tyranids have been beaten back by our Plasma Turret. Been fended off. And now it's a case of just can they destroy all this stuff? Thankfully, the, the turrets have been focusing on the Chaos Temple rather than the Plasma Generators. I would have further have sent the Chaos player backwards in the old economy department. Some nice stuff while they defend. Let's have a look at the economies. Uh, 210 and 119 for the Dark Eldar. 174 and 69 way the meme number for the Tyranids. And 133 and 79 for the uh, Tau Empire. Compared to 181 and 79, 40% and 162 and 46 and 30. So yeah, definitely a major economic disparity between the well, the top right team and the bottom left team. We now also see the Tau Slur, but surely making their way down onto the southern side. The XV-88 broadside battle suits placing themselves into position. They've got three of them. And they absolutely need to take on this field command before the Tech Priest Agency can finish it. As once that is up, Imperial Guard are known for just being absolute bastards in regards to holding onto their fortifications in Ultimate Apocalypse. Specifically, 
Well, they are quite good at in all map in all the versions, but you here, man. They are cantankerous little little boys and girls. Well, John Cena beam coming down, preventing the scourges from firing away. Being also stabbed in the midriff by the Necron Lord. Sadness and badness for everyone available as they get chased around. But now a mass of Tyranids and the Tau. Finally, the Tyranids have seen the uh, the ways of the greater good, potentially. Now we've got Chimera. Assault Chimeras as well. Flamer on top of this boy. Good amounts of AoE damage. Break through the bug lines, but those broadside battle suits shoring up the rear, providing that firing support. It's going to be really difficult for these guys to deal with. But a lot of tanks. It's going to be killer kind of effects moving forward. Won't be surviving too long. It's not the tankiest of kind of effects. We'll just politely ignore these guys and go straight for the listing post. Got a couple of destroyers on the go as well. While none of this is anti-vehicle, there's plenty of it. That is just... God, because I know that the weaponry for the Tyranids quite often is just them firing more bugs at people. I can't imagine how the crew in the tank feel as the creepy crawlies come crawling creepily inside of their tank. But both tanks have been destroyed as a mass swarms over the Imperial Guardsman's base. Do you have boys inside your defensive structures, though? That's my question. But you haven't got that many. You could... I don't know, maybe a couple of conscripts in here would be an idea. And in here as well. But the Terminids, knowing that they're not really going to be opening up that field command anytime soon, now they're starting to focus on other things. Looking at the production buildings of the Mechanized Command, as well as the listing post. Broadside battle suits moving forward. And we'll add to the damage incoming over on this side. We'll have a bit of a push. Oh, well, there was a push. The Necrons were doing things, and now they've teleported down. I assume. Assume. Oh, no, they've teleported down here. They've done it down here. Or swiftness into the combat over here, but that's fine. Plenty of guardsmen inside the field commands now. They're losing their tactical control. Half health of the mechanized command. No listening posts on the right hand side now, but decaps on the GURP. And the Imperial Guard, they're kind of lacking, I would say, in the punching department. They've, they've got. We've got plenty of defensive things on the go, although I imagine they probably lost a fair few things while defending stuff over here. Bang for the Necrons there. What do I mean, what do I mean by punching power? I mean mobile punching power. Like, they've got lots of people inside here that can do good for them, but not much in the way of tanks and stuff. They had a couple of Chimeras, but kind of lost all those guys in defense of their base. Screamer Killer Kind Effects has been destroyed. Slain in the field of combat. An ominous forward motion of destroyers. We've got the Pathfinders on the back lines with the rail guns. Take out any approaching infantry. Also got Dark Portal here as well. Should the Dark Elder want to manoeuvre things. And here comes a Talos on the Chaos Space Marine side of things. Plenty of Immortals there. So, sadly the Talos will not be alive for very long. We'll attempt to shimmy and shake out there, but has been destroyed. And the scourges are now opening fire on the plasma generators. Got to really expect slow here. Although he's in a very bad situation, he has held on. He hasn't given up. Which is always something one should take the hat off to. A dogged defence. And the Mandrake's been slain without ceremony by those guys. But there we go. Good King now rebuilding. All his lost stuff. Also, putting, uh, popping down some heavy weapons teams, which are outranged by the Pathfinders and the broadside battle suits. He's going to stay there anyway. He's not going to. He's not. He's not going to fall back. He's just chilling. Over here, the well, worldwide has been broken by the Dark Eldar, but the Necrons don't mind it at all. 
Also a Tomb Spider picking up the dead and dying. Scared is not sure where to go as that Solar Pulse has blinded them by the looks of things. More ways than the standard. More Towers of Loving. Quite an impressive amount of, of should I say, dedication to the turret build. It's giving me strong uh, Photon Rush. Of, is it Proton? What's the name? The, the, the Blue Aliens from Starcraft. Protoss, there we go. Protoss turret rushes from back in the day. Got tier 2 slash 3 incoming as the Tyranids swarm over. Once again, good King's base. But now he's got a lot more of a defensible position. He's got the heavy weapons teams out. Got the Chimera. His field commands just teeming with lads inside. Back to back. But, in saying that, that's a lot of Christ's battle suits. That's quite a lot indeed. And they're not armed with any missile pods or anything like that as of yet. Probably just saving their weapon upgrades to see what would be the most viable thing to go for them. Also got another Talos chilling out in the middle. And all of them are going to jump in unison. They will be spotted by an Annihilation Barge. But very quickly, they will take it down. Necron Lord coming in for a big Solar Pulse. Saving that Annihilation Barge from immediate death. Chimera moving forward with the Destroyers. Talos moving in for support. Almost looked like they were planning to give a unison then, which is quite sweet. The Necrons are going to be a bit shafted here. The Imperial Guardsmen able to defend their base very nicely, but the Necrons are going to struggle a little bit more. A cheeky teleport towards them, showing intimidation and, and domination. So it's not even engaging close combat for whatever reason, not sure why. Probably just given up. That's fine. You know, everyone needs a rest from time to time. No judgment here. Last of the Christ battle suits have been slain as a small chunk of them have been frozen in stasis. So they won't take any damage, but they can't do any damage neither. So that's that's I mean just imagine being that dude inside that, that suit. Wanting to escape, wanting to fly away, but knowing that powerful concave of Necron Warriors are doing things to you. Very unpleasant things. Good lord, that stasis is lasts forever, doesn't it? Oh no, that is, it's, it's off now. They've just accepted the fate, and they have been killed. As a Tomb Spider does some sort of hug me bro kind of thing. Which is nice of him. And the Dark Eldar, they've been kept at bay. The Chaos Space Marines are now actually... How's your economy doing, Mr. Space Marine Man? Not terrible. All things considered, it's not the economy you want at minute 18 of a Ultimate Apocalypse game. But, considering that you're on the verge of death for quite some time, not bad at all. We are seeing that the Dark Eldar Disco is online now. So that would mean that they are in tier 2 slash 3. Question mark. They've, they've, they've teched up anyway. I've got for plenty of production buildings as well. Seeing some clawed fiends on the way, and the clawed fiends are mighty devilish fiends indeed. Got to be really careful when they're on the field as their ability to chunk down HQs like no man's business is quite tremendous. There are plenty of Skyway missile gunships for. The artillery of the Tau Empire. And that's one way to crack open the Imperial Guard. Just don't even bother going to see them. Destroy them from afar, which is exactly what the Tau are known for. A couple of turret emplacements over here. Not sure if the Imperial Guard will be able to defend their northernmost position. Got morale being broken. Archon is here. Claude Fiend as well as some scourges being brought forth by the teleporting nonsense of the warp or whatever. And straight away it's going to go for the Desecrated Stronghold. Heretics 
dancing in the moonlight as best they can, but just so obnoxious is the Claude Fiend. There's no real counter for it. Unless, of course, you see it coming from a mile off, but obviously there was no way to like, just basically just spawn inside the base. Do the Chaos Space Marines have another base somewhere else? That's my question. No, but you do have some heretics, so you need to chase these guys away and build something ASAP. Oh, there we go. Thank goodness. So they managed to narrowly survive, but the Claude Fiend is going to be an absolute nuisance. As a counter, the Necrons are charging forward. The Necron Lord keeping these guys at bay, phase shifting out of the damage zone as well, although lots of Necron Warriors are in a nice little blob for the artillery to come forth in. That is just a lot of blue being blasted around here, there and everywhere. Got some Tyranid Warriors on this side as well, coming down to support the Tau. Lots of um, Tau... Uh, what, what, what are they called? Tyranids! Lots of Tyranid nonsense as they summon forth a whole bunch of spine gods without numbers. And that is just a sad situation. Didn't quite have the mass. Needed some Imperial Guard support. They've got their Basilisks there. Basilisks start booming down on these broadside Shasphere. Or Shas... Well, how I want to pronounce that. Uh, broadside battle suits. Should now do a fair bit of damage. But can they kill all of this? That's my question. The Scarab Missile Gunship's not having the best of times. Awesome counter barrages going on. That's an intimidating sight. Has the Claude Fiend been taken care of? It looks like it has. Good stuff. Oh, no, the, well, they may have sorted out, but there's no more. There's no more of them. Just sad. One lonely Tyranid Warrior been separated from the pack. But I've now seen the Basilisks. Look at this man. He's not even scared. He drives forward, giving them a better opportunity to stab him. Why not? If death is coming, may as well meet it in hand-to-hand -hand combat, regardless of what vehicle you're in. Every weapons team's on the back lines with their auto cannons. I'm not sure how efficiently they'll cut through the warriors. Still got more basilisks on the back lines, and their field commands are still quite substantially packed. The Claude Fiends still over here. We do have a Restore Monolith. And is that going to be a second? Is it, hold on. Is that a fake one? Are you faking me out here? No, you're real. Real as hedgehogs. Fantastic stuff. That will help smash up that Claude Fiend. That Claude Fiend. As a Necron Blooming Disco is on the go. Oh, well, Portal. Able to summon forth more units and whatnot. Like these Death Touch Pariahs. As they've been zapped by lightning. Oh, that's a bit of Storm Priest. That's what you're doing. Just just vibing. That's what he's doing. Still command feeling worse than it did originally, but plenty of Tech Priest Engine Seers to keep it being repaired as the Tau just unload a whole smorgasbord of fire upon them. Turn the Warriors that have been defeated. Storm Monolith has come in for support. Losing that field command there. Well, that's okay. They've got an extra one. They've got a spare one. Bless them. An extra one down here as well, just in case. My goodness, you're showing that how that defensive capacity of the Imperial Guard here. That was a lot of Terminids. That was a lot of Tau. And now there is now not a lot of Terminids. But plenty of bodies on the ground. And yeah, it's just a it's just a tale of two cities here. Got major aggression from the north right team. And impeccable defenses from the southern left team. Again, the Chaos Space Beam player should not exist right now, but showing amazing resilience, determination in the field of combat. Missiles. Everything is quite at the moment. Do have a resurrection orb being used on the Necron Warriors. Whether they're going to stick around or start moving away, I'm not entirely sure, but they do manage to take down the, well, at least one Scar Air Missile gunship. Maybe even a second one, if they have the opportunity. Currently don't have any Tau infantry at the moment. I wonder if you pop them all in the Guidance Beacon, ready to deploy them later on. Got some Immortals 
mixed in with the Necron Warriors. And actually, yeah, down quite quickly. Also got... Oh, I didn't even know it's you guys. Little priesty priests coming forward and just doing what they do best, which is revving their chainsaws in the grand old time. And now the Tau Empire are struggling a bit, but they're going to retaliate. Pure aggression here. Not messing around with defending themselves. But blinding spike of deception. Never seen you before. Not sure what you do. Can't even click on you. You're gone now. It's all right. Don't need to know what it does if it doesn't exist. I mean, I like the idea. I like any kind of aggressive plays. As it's fun to watch, but... Not sure what they were planning to achieve here, Mr. Get Clapped. Teleporting in the middle of a Necron base is a surefire way to die. Wonderful use of a Stole Storm, though. Acquiring targets. Just ripping, or should I say corroding, I guess. Corroding's probably a more apt term for this. The Necron Warriors and the Gene Sealers. Very swift. Very strong in the late games once they start getting their upgrades going for them. Looks like they've got their infiltration upgrade. Death and Sadness. Once again, reigning over those Necron Warriors. Couple of getting back up there, rebuilding themselves. Only to be struck down again. The reanimation protocols just refusing to let them die. Oh, is the, was that a basilisk helping, helping the immortal die then? That he refuses to die. You can't kill him. Either by friend or foe, uh, he's not going back. Oh, no, no, man, he is now. Okay, fair enough. All right, then. Got the magma vent being shot at by the Annihilation Barge. But, shot down himself. Now we're seeing the beginning of the zone for a ball. Whether it um, uh, ruined... Uh, uh, sorry. Reaper God 36 is planning that mass of zone for I'm not entirely sure. But we do have the Dark Eldar player who's been kind of sitting on his haunches for a little while. He's got a couple of Reapers which acts as the artillery for the Dark Eldar in Ultimate Apocalypse. And I imagine he's probably gotten something special saved up. He's got some soul cages, in fact, double soul cages, for sacrificing souls or big, bad upgrades. Potential titanic units. He's just been chilling at the moment. Have you, been, have you just been saving up money? You've got plenty of money. But not seeing much. You've got some Trueborn. Quite lethal. In combat. Down here, the Necrons just point blank refuse to push back for too long. The Storm Monolith slowly making its way forward. Got some bubbling brooks of Tyranid filth doing mischief to those. What oh, was your name? You are. What kind of prize are you? You are Death Touch Priors. And also Death Lord in there as well. We should be called De Death Lords, really. Lack of punctuation and pluralities. Dear, oh dear. The Stormblade. Mighty fine against destroying buildings. Although the zone frips are here. And also an XB9 hazard suit. Which is basically like the late game. Tau. You know, you, you kind of see. Well, yeah, you've probably seen it so far with the uh, these broadsides here. With the Christ battle suits. All of them basically like. Tau, de general Tau strategy is mass up battle suits in a big ball, throw them at the enemy, and the XV9 hazard suits are probably the best ones, I would say, due to their long range, their tankiness, and their ability to get some ion cannons, which smash things up in a pinch, and reposition themselves over this. I got a shell. Try and get some vision on here as the Dark Eldar bring down some pink smirk. A bit of disco on top of the restored monolith. But did they not know that from the Necron perspective, disco is dead? Tomb Spiders, or Tomb Stalker even. The Necron Centipede, if you will. Doing a little head bob as it is trying to eat. What are you? You are. Oh, you're an Archon. An Archon being munched down on. Guidance Beacon soon to be taken down. If the... There we go. Just, just a couple more shots to do it. There we go. Storm Monolith nowhere to be seen. Got some Ogrins coming forth. 
Hill guard. Quite comfortable in their home base at the moment. Probably want to start assisting their Necron ally. I mean, to be fair though, they are assisting in the form of artillery. And that's not a small amount of artillery neither. But unable to defend themselves now. As they will just come in and more or less one-shot a bunch of these basilisks. Ogrids will come in and see if they can bonk them on the shins. But we've got quite powerful shins of these hazard suits. Have an attempt of Chaos Space Marines to give the two minutes what for, but do have the Reapers primed in position. Battle Fortress has been seen, so will be shot down did. Nice. Eventually, gradually, we could do it. Oh, no, no, man. Are you going to do it? No, there's so much tension. There's, there's lots of buildings and potentially being killed, but they're not quite. There we go. Thank goodness. Good Lord. And the crisis suits, or the hazard suits, sorry, have been shaken away. Imperial Guard going for more basilisks. Cause I'm not sure basilisks at the moment now is the way forward when we see all those hazard suits. But again, I suppose they are still technically elite infantry. And we do also have the zone for need to take care of as well. Stormblade still knocking around. And his main idea is just to tell these zone furps to get gone. But they're not taking his advice. It's very rude of them. Ghost Space Marines, they've fallen back, but now they're coming back with a vengeance. As more zone furps and more raiders come forth. We also have, oh dear, we've got the, ah, the Great Cabal Citadel, which just sits there and constantly fires at a bunch of random targets until they're dead. The entirety of the game he says, yep. Yeah. Second of all, you're going to fire at that listing first then, but I'm not sure if you can actually choose the target of the Cabal Citadel. But a Claude Fiend now is coming inside the base. Like I said, it's just obnoxious, isn't it? It comes in, does a stupid amount of damage to your HQ. So we'll send Slur back in the tech tree. But that's been surrounded by a lot of Death Touch Pariahs. Doesn't seem like it's able to escape at the moment. And they will slay him where he stands. At least for the moment. Necrods have been doing a fairly decent push inside the power base, but not quite able to get within Killing Blows range. Or seen the Hive Tyrant and a fully fledged Carnifex has made their way into the Imperial Guard base once again. And at the moment, the Imperial Guard don't have much to defend with, apart from the Stormblade. And a couple of highly upgraded listening bursts. Hive Tyrant resisting that incoming damage with a... Well, it's not a Void Shield, whatever you would call the... Timid Psy Shield? Is that what it would be called? Who knows? Either way, look at him, he's just... Whatever, man. Can't kill me. We can make him stop doing stuff, whatever. What, what are you doing? We've got his nuke in IG. And there we go. The intimidated nuke on the way. So even though the Imperial Guard are mighty fine defence, can't really defend yourself against meteors. Intimidated. Nuke being a case of just a small meteor shower, followed by a final big finishing boom. And yeah, it would make sense that the Timonids are the final group to... Or should I say, sorry, the, the first group even to get a nuke on the go. As they have not been assaulted at all inside their base. And oh, my frame rate, be gentle. And one mighty... Pillory Tower, smack bang, in the middle of that field command. There we go, that's a, that's a fingering they won't forget. As the Necrons try and get extract some sort of revenge by slaying the Tau. You see a coalition centre, but not much. Or Tau models, oh, we do have the hazard suits, right. 
don't know where you went. I assume to do other stuff. Turn and has been spawned inside the Imperial Guardsman's base. Can they defend there? That's the question. They've still got their field commander and it's being repaired. Which, my goodness, like, even when it's got a huge spike through it, taking on the field command is quite an immense task. Also now got a Stormblade on the way as well as the... Oh, there's two Stormblades. Okay. Yep. So somehow the Imperial Guard are probably, gonna, probably going to defend this. Which is remarkable. Claude Fiend, that's one way to counter Claude Fiend. Just surround him. Oh, but not back. And also the Soulstorm. Doesn't seem to be doing that much damage to the Death Touch Prize, though. And these Chaos Space Marines fighting that long war here. I assume that these are the same units that were knocking around before. We do have the Lich Guard inside the Dark Eldar base. And there's just lots of little engagements going on across the map at the moment. Definitely need to curtail the Dark Eldar. Um, trying to get some sort of hits on the Great Capacitor, though, although it is absolutely surrounded by Towers of Loathing. <laughs> Not seeing any Webway or Great Webway sales on the Dark Eldar, so I imagine they're probably thinking more nuclear rather than building up a Titan or anything like that. Terminids. Trying to finish off the Imperial Guard, but no. They say no, thank you. Not today. What are you on about? A large hole in the in our side of our field command. That's just another firing position for us. Just another place we could put our las guns. Amazing stuff. Tau do seem to have defended themselves, although they have lost a fair few of their structures. Managing to rebuild that guidance beacon there. So what what F is here that they're firing at? Who's down here? It is the... Oh, it's a Destroyer Lord. And he's just zapping everyone. What an absolute... Humongous Chad. Have you shrunk those guys? Oh my goodness. I had no idea the Destroyer Lord could shrink people. There we go. Put him in a Tesseract chamber. Of some description. I'm now seeing... The Raider being... Oh, no, you're not a Raider. You are a Dice of Destruction. Never mind me. Mighty Relic Unit for the Dark Eldar. Doesn't seem to be doing much at the moment, actually. Got little guns on the front, I suppose. Chaos Space Marines going to aid their allies by assaulting the left flank. A small, practically elite force by this point. So the sheer amount of experience that they've had in this engagement... One, one cultist, I should have said, aspiring champion. No cultist friends left to cap that critical location. We're going to give it a go. Best go that they can. Plenty of Towers of Loving there in the centre of the map. How much economy do you have, Chaos Space Beam player? You've got, you've got a good flirt. Not amazing income at the moment, but you've got enough money to still contribute to sections of the battlefield. I mean, you're not building up anything else. I could probably recommend, even if it's like a squad of like, just like a mass of raptors or something, to move around and snipe away these plasma oh, no, no, Never mind, what am I saying? Not raptors, but I mean, hell talons. I'll be a lot more useful in this situation. I mean, all these plasma generators here, you kill a couple of those guys, chain reaction all the way, potentially even oh, that's, you know, maybe a bit too far to do damage on this side, but still, quite useful. Do have the Hive Tyrant still knocking around here. The Zone Fraps. Do quite like how Reaper God has decided, you know what, the most optimal thing to do in this situation would be to go for the Master Zone Fraps, but he's got honour as this kid. Will he nuke your base? Absolutely. But he won't use the Zone Fraps ball. And that's got to be commended. A lot of commendable behaviour in this match, actually, all things considered. Archon zapping the Lich Guard, stunning them into immovability as they just get slapped around on all angles by Soul Portal. Been placed as well as two Claude Fiends right now. If, if there's anything that could kill the Pale Guard base, it has to be a Claude Fiend, but they can't get past these Storm Blades. But the Minister Storm Priests 
seeing what they can do. But the Claude Fiends are just refusing to give up the chase. What is going on? We are seeing the Necrons inside the tower base. We are also seeing some Necrons pushing into the Dark Eldar base. So actually a lot of heavy lifting from uh, Eshan here. Leaving no stone unturned. He is engaging in total war against absolutely everyone. Do quite like that. We've got the Chaos Lord also being given all of his upgrades as well. So even though it's a small elite force, he's still getting... Well, he's still squeezing the most juice out of every unit that he has. Which is definitely a way to go about it. Not sure what... I was wondering where that... I mean, uh, Dark Eldar Citadel was firing there, but it seems to just be firing at nothing in particular. Yeah, fair enough. Maybe there's like a cockroach there or something. I really want to taken care of. Very annoying if it's Dark Eldar you want a fear of insects. Can't imagine you'd be best pleased. Oh, Swarm Lord. Which is going to be remarkably difficult for the southern team to take care of. Swarm Lord has got, what is it, 30,000 health. Incredible health regen. I have it on good authority. I have been told that the Swarm Lord has been killed in combat before. But I have never seen such a thing take place. Swarm Lord is basically a end game unit for the Tyranids. Equivalent to like a super duper nuke. But I suppose that the Tyranids have probably got... Oh, you don't have that much money. Huh. Unless you spend all your money on the Swarm Lord. Maybe that is... Maybe it's a really expensive unit. I don't really know. Either way, look at him. He's just not taking any damage. He's T-posing over the boys to establish dominance. He's like, try and kill me. You can't. You're not doing nearly enough damage. And it's going to require significant shootings to get him down. Maybe these Stormblades should turn their attention. Focus firing him, but no. They're going to... Oh, right. That makes sense. A good idea to focus the Iron Cannon, considering that it's... It's a giant cannon. Oh, did you sneak this? Superstructure. Well, I suppose I was kind of focusing down here, wasn't I? <laughs> the map of winners. So terrible, I can't even notice something. It's a little bit to the right hand side. There we go. The fire big boom into the air, and the storm blades will be taken care of. Lickety split. And dear, oh dear, we have seen that the tenders have also nuked this side of the base on the map as well, as the Necrons have lost all their plasma generators. They've also lost their desperate strongholds. And what else can happen here? They've lost the Stormblade. They're about to lose another one as it is just not noticing the Swarm Lord coming over. There might have been a potential to do a fair chunk of damage to him when there were two Stormblades. There's a slim chance when there is one. My goodness, when they lose this one. The main components of their firepower have been swiftly dealt with. And this is why you cannot let the Tyranids alone on their side of the map. You can already anticipate the comments saying, Oh yeah, but Miss Landshark, the nukes are overpowered. The Swarm Lord is also overpowered. Yes, I understand. That is the whole point. They are absolutely just unnecessarily strong. But they are also unnecessarily expensive as well. Very difficult to get those guys actually on the battlefield. And if you just have constant assaults going on on the Terminator side of things, uh, breaking down their reclamation pools and stuff, they just don't have the option of, of getting stuff like this on the board. But leave them to their own devices. Let them build up. And, well, this is what this is what you get. This is what you get. Swarm Lord just really just kind of having a grand old time. Minding his own business. Screaming away. Like a roller coaster. Screaming if he wants to go faster. And what, what are you? You are Destroyer Lord. You're still knocking around. Apparently impossible to kill. For whatever reason. But he's, he's, he's going to give it a go. Why not? I'm going to try and politely ignore the Timonids and focus on the Dark Eldar. 
Claude Fiend munching on some meat. And a, oh my goodness, it's a fleet of Telos. We have never seen a fleet as mighty as these. Balp Citadel being cancelled by lots of things as they come forward. No Miss Landshark, don't get distracted by the Talos. There's other more important stuff happening. I really want to watch the Talos, but there's a resurrection orb on the go here. There's Tomb Stalkers. And I suppose the easiest way to kill a Swarm Lord at this point in the game is to wipe out all the Tyranid production structures. You're probably more likely to succeed in that than you are killing this boy who's just single-handedly just taken down the Imperial Guard base. An impressive defence earlier on, but what can you do against a four-armed mad lad? Ion Cannon, I'm oh, sorry, Ion Cannon, constantly firing away. I do love the slow way it turns around, very ominous. And the Necrons are no more. Nice use of the Resurrection Orb to keep people alive and in the fight. It wasn't enough. Now the Swarm Lord is going to ignore all this stuff. He's just thinking about destroying all the tech structures so no one can even dare challenge his supremacy. Destroy the Lord, my, my, my guy. You are just an absolute beast. Like, like you're, not, you're not doing all that much, granted, but you're just everywhere. Refusing to die. Storm on the finishing just as the uh, Swarm Lord was about to come in to slay it. Now trying to defend itself. We are seeing small bits of damage being done. But we need consistent high DPS. It's been focused on that Swarm Lord to kill him. Eshan throwing out his apologies. Not sure why you're apologizing. If anything, both the left hand side and the right hand side would have fallen if it wasn't for Eshan's impeccable support all the way through this match. Phenomenal stuff from all players, really, to be honest. The hyper-aggressiveness of the Dark Eldar in the early stages of the game, making sure that the Chaos player wasn't able to really uh, get off and build up a really big fighting force. But then he was still contributing all the way through, making sure that his side of the map wasn't overtaken by any kind of Dark Eldar shenanigans. Imperial Guard doing a very impressive defensive um, uh, stuff for quite a long time. Absolutely convinced that uh, when the Tyranids were coming down after they got nuked, that was going to be it for him. But no, holding on for a hero. And then the Tau, I mean, yeah, they didn't really shine too much in the late game, but definitely using their Crisis Battle Suits and whatnot to get some critical strikes in there. And also the Ionic Cannon to... So you're not an Ionic Cannon. You are just a regular Ion Cannon. And, yeah, firing away. The Tyranids winning the shirt by building up their economy and essentially not being attacked. But you can't really blame this team for not being able to attack them. They were too busy not dying. So, whatever. But yeah, cool. So thank you guys for sending that game in to the Discord. Uh, if you want to support the channel, have a look at the old Patreon. One pound a month gets you one extra game a week, and there is also a Discord where Discord things happen. Links in the description as always. As for this Lunchak, pleasure's always never chart, and I'll see you in a bit. Peace.